Hi, my name is Kurt Gessler, and today I'll be introducing you to four different entry-level data visualization programs, Google Fusion Tables, Data Wrapper, Infogram, and Google Charts. Each of them will allow you to easily create very respectable-looking interactive graphics that can be embedded on your website. The first data visualization tool we will explore today is Google Fusion Tables, which is a great choice for map visualizations and a really poor choice for most chart visualizations. But we shall explore this to its end. Now, once you've hooked up Google Fusion Tables to your Google Drive account, we can begin. We'll be working with this chart here. We have an Excel spreadsheet of durations and times of year for Chicago area public school strikes. So we'll browse and get this file. See, it will take a raw Excel file, not a CSV. Usually do a very easy job ingesting this. Now, because this is a deprecated feature, we'll have to go back to the classic look. And under Visualize, we'll do this as a bar chart. And then you see some of the basic stuff right here. One of the first things we'll do is make this public. Sometimes it's buggy if you make some display changes on your chart and then make it public. It undoes all the fine work you've done. So let's go into Configure Chart. Now there's not a whole lot of options here anymore. So we can put our header here, Chicago Area School Strikes. Maybe we could say this should be a little bit bigger. See, we could put our legend where we need it to. Actually, it looked fine. Top right, uh, Dario. You see our background is now one color. You can make a few, well, those seem to be actually unavailable these days. Used to be a little more robust. Right now we see we're separated in half days here. Let's take this down to four major grid lines. Two minor should get you to the normal days. Number format seems to be the right one. Duration and days seems to look perfect. You see we can no longer pick a color anymore. Usually we'll do a little bit of customization, but Again, not anymore. You also see that it really didn't display our dates at all. It only gave us our institutions and our durations. In this visualization, it automatically ignored uh, the date time spans that we had. So here's our chart. This is about as good as it gets. If you want to put this on a website, get your embeddable code. We could scale it however we want to, say 600 by 300. And you would just simply copy and paste, and you could put this into any HTML page very gracefully. The next tool we'll look at is Data Wrapper, and this is a great tool, one of my favorite, when you don't have time to do anything custom because it really gives a nice display and it makes very intelligent decisions with your data. We're going to look at um, a bunch of data I scraped from the National Weather Service. First being a look at a snowfall total from the biggest storms in Chicago history. So we click from the login screen, create chart. All right, so you can see you can either copy and paste your data, which it does pretty well, or we can just upload a CSV file, which is certainly preferable. And right away, it already identifies this as the chart part of it. First row is our label, date and snowfall. We'll put it in as the organization of me. I don't have a link because there's no single data source here. Let's click Visualize. And you see it has our different template choices right here. 
let's make this a column chart. Now you see there's a tabbed interface here, so we can start to refine the chart. Let's say we don't like that color. We can maybe make it a skosh darker. See it has reasonable hover effect. Did a good job not making our date ranges um, kind of a squished mess. Click on the final tab. We need that much of a description. Let's. Um, this is a nice feature that allows you to um, highlight a single column as the most important in your data point, which in this case is obvious. However, it doesn't hurt to do it. And let's hit publish. See it's working right there, we have our graphic there, and this is where we get our embed code. We can scale this to whatever size we need, and then just copy and paste the embed code right here. So it really couldn't be any easier than that. Let's try a few others, see if we can challenge it a bit. For the next one we're going to give it... Where is my? There we are. Let's look at some temperatures for the longest below zero streaks in Chicago history, as well as its associated lowest temperature. And those are some pretty cold temperatures. Upload another CSV file. First row is still on label, and you see it's found two different columns that it likes data for. I'll make these two blank for the sake of expediency here. Go on to visualize. And you see here, we'll keep it as a bar chart. Let's go on to refining our chart. Base color. How do we feel about greens? I guess it's not very snowy. Grays sound fine. Tell the story. This is the ones below zero streaks in Chicago history and the associated oops, coldest. We won't highlight a specific element. One of the nicest features here is that since we had two different columns that were active, it will allow us to toggle back and forth between it. So we could say on this date, starting on this date, there were 98 consecutive hours below zero. And with a quick toggle, you can see the lowest temperature on that date was in that streak was negative 25. So it didn't just make certain good data disappear, it integrated it rather seamlessly into the whole process. And again, you see we have the embed code right here as well, too. Let's look at something other than bar charts. Oh, I'm going to hit my screen below here again. Let's look at 
some historical winter snowfall total. So there's a winter season in Chicago and its snowfall total going back to 1884 all the way to the polar vortex winter of 2013-2014. So just two columns of data but pretty deep historical run. There's our CSV file. Quickly identify the data. Move on to visualize. You see it comes in as a bottomless bar chart. Let's make this a line chart right from the onset. As you see, with the hover effect, it lets you go right through. You could pretty easily see here, oh, there's the winter of 79, which is the greatest. And there's a lot of very reasonable refinements we can do. We can make this curved, probably fill the area below the line to accentuate it. Take our base color darker maybe. Well, let's put a quick description here to see where this is going to integrate itself in here. If there's any element we need to highlight. Source name again is National Weather Service. Nicer. Let's uh, publish it then. See what we get. But as you can see, this is a great way to go back to some pretty quick historic data. So you can easily tell that this year at 67.9 inches is the fourth worst winter ever. Lucky us. Let's do one more here quickly. We'll do another line chart. This will be for just January temperatures. Here we have daily temperatures. We have the low temp, high temp. These are actuals. And then the average low and average high for those days. CSV file. See, it's identified quickly all of it. First row is label. Looks good. Okay, it will first come in as a bar chart. It will look repugnant. Let's switch it to a line chart here. And right away you see this is exactly how you need to display this. So here's our average high. You can see how many days were below and even some above. And then here's our low temperatures. Mostly well below the average low for the season. And you really get a sense of the volatility of the weather here by looking at this data on a series of line charts. And here we can adjust the legend position if we want to. 
you know, top seems to do a little better. We have no missing lines we need. We don't need direct labeling. We could play around with curved and straight lines. I think straight seem to work here. We don't need to extend to zero because we're already there. Here, and this is January. And we'll just give a general description here. See where it's going to integrate it. Don't need to pick an element here because it's a monthly trend chart. I've gone with the standard colors since they don't really offend me too much. And then right away you can see here's a great way to illustrate some rather, pardon the pun, cold and dry weather data into something that's immediately translatable. So you can see that um, Data Wrapper offers a variety of ways to look at your data and pretty much every time, like I said, made those really smart decisions on how to interpret that data. For our next DataViz tool, we will look at Infogram, moving right away from Germany to Latvia here. Um, Infogram is a, a really decent program. Handles live feeds nicely in JSON format. It also offers more varieties of chart templates than does a data wrapper. Not quite as uh, customizable. We'll look at a couple chart types here. Here we have some Excel data on Chicago weather. See, it's the coldest days in Chicago history. Here is January 20th, 1985 at a balmy negative 27. Good times. So let's turn that into a chart. See right away it offers you to do an infographic or a chart. We prefer the interactive data. You see here is the different uh, uh, charts you can choose from. And within each of these are various sub-genres. Here the bar chart has regular, stacked, grouped, or radial. For this first experiment, we'll just use a bar chart. So click Add Chart. Here's the first kind of awkward point of this. You see that once you get to this point, you have to double click to edit chart. And all the mock data is still there. You have to actually write over it. So load data. Here's where you can connect your live data. We'll upload a file. You see this takes uh, comma separated as well as Excel. We'll browse a bit and take a uh, coldest Chicago. Toggle over to settings here, you see it has a uh, bright rainbow of colors by default. And if you want to change them, you have to do it kind of one at a time. And you're not even sure what to do with you, click off to make it change. So, a little awkward. You can go with a single color if you don't like the spilled box of Skittles look. probably a little more graceful. Your chart height can be controlled here. This has fully responsive output, so that's very nice. 600 seems a little much. Maybe we'll go down to 500. Here we go. This label is temperature. As you can see there. Got a title. Again, a little clunky um, on the interface. Make this happen. The Ten coldest days in Chicago. Yes. And I see the display is a little wonky here. It'll clean it up when we publish it. Make sure there's not any more customization we want to do here. 
the chart height, the axis range is fine. So we are done here. Let's go to share and publish. And here you can get either fixed width or responsive embed code. So that really is quite nice. Let's preview our chart right here. And as you see, pretty much as build. Certainly not the most amazing looking output in the world, but honestly very solid for the time it took us to uh, put it together. Now let's go back to this and create another type of chart. Let's do, we have some Twitter data here most popular Twitter accounts in Chicago. Probably about a year old now, so forgive me if the data is somewhat out of date. Let's do a chart. For this, let's do a tree map. Chart. Again, double click, and we still have to deal with all this generic data. So we will upload our data here. There's our settings. Actually, I guess the tree map doesn't look so bad in the uh, rainbow of fruit flavors tree map look. I'll put that a little better there. Not nearly as many options. We're done. We think we really need a description here. Seems self explanatory. Again, time over to our embed code. So we published it. Let's look at it for a second here and just see how it works. So then on hover, you have to find out how many some of the people are. You'll see that when you get into smaller elements of a tree map, it just instead of trying to display as much, it just simply hides them. I don't think this is the greatest thing, but um, again, unlike data wrapper, this uh, Infogram tends to make some data decisions which are um, a little more awkward. But still, we able to put a pretty decent looking tree map together um, really quite quickly. So, uh, whereas it may not be the best choice in all cases, certainly is a by far more than serviceable one. The final chart tool we'll explore is going to be Google Charts, which is really in many ways a very different animal than Infogram or Data Wrapper or even Fusion Tables. It really is um, probably a, a step up in difficulty um, because it requires some knowledge of markup and Google's API. It probably is envisioned for more dynamic uses than just one-off graphics. However, if you understand the rules, you can um, make and effectively scale some pretty good looking pieces with this. Um, what it will require you to do is go to the uh, uh, Google Charts website as we see here and everything is kind of set up in this charts gallery where they allow you to kind of pick the type of chart you'd like. Let's look at a bar chart in this case and then they walk you through this in uh, great detail um, of the API kind of how this stuff would work. So you see as you kind of scroll down here, they basically tell you how you can uh, change a color or the opacity of any of the features of the chart kind of um, by customizing this bit of uh, uh, markup and stuff right up here. If you look at the markup itself, there's kind of two primary parts. Um, now this is for a standalone piece. You see this as the HTML page and head and body and stuff, which you don't have to include, but there's um, the parts you have to worry about this here, where this is the variable data, this is your chart data and how it's formatted, and then the chart options, what you want the colors and title and everything else to be. Um, so this is just a quick grab of a bar chart data and some of their samples. I've only changed the colors here 
slightly different and let's just take a quick peek at what this would look like when we load it and you see you have um, from blue and green we set as our variable here we have blue and green bars some nasty red text over here because all I did was simply style the uh, 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 the bars I didn't style anything else here you see the color red for the v-axis title here is uh, still for year and it ends up working pretty well now if you're going to be embedding something like this you only need to include the um, script call here at the top of a page on an existing web page where you don't want to put all this data in your head and then your div call because this is where it actually draws your graphic to whatever size you need take a look at a quick project I looked at I had some university graduation rates here in an Excel spreadsheet and I took this data out of this form again there's no browser-based upload a uh, XLS or a uh, CSV file or something I had to manually beat the data into uh, the format that Google wanted and I put that right here let's open this up and you see here there's the same initial calls here is all the data college graduates um, you see there's a call here called roll style if I wanted to individually style each bar a different color I could do that you see that um, the final style call here is empty I've just left that there and you have your graduation rates I specified a couple hex colors here the title and so on and let's see what that ends up looking like and you have here you could easily see that um, you could hover over each of the colors to get the whole breakdown you could go okay U of I 80 nearly 85 percent of students graduated six years that's very good Chicago State University only three percent graduate in four years so you get a pretty striking tale that just the tabular data in a spreadsheet didn't tell you by doing this visual but again as you can see really um, tremendously customizable go back to the website and look at this here as you can see all the different features you can do which is basically a lot of CSS um, but requires you to kind of pick and choose exactly what you want to do and make that work and this is just for bar charts um, at the bottom of each of these pages is a, a very detailed listing of uh, specific API calls and stuff like that so again Google Charts nice option um, for creating um, uh, charts that you can really control at a granular level but again, certainly a step up on the difficulty scale than um, Infogram or Data Wrapper.